This is the Horse Radio Network. Greetings, everyone. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily, episode 1448. Today's show is an excerpt from the Dressage Radio Show here on Horse Radio Network. Show hosts Philip Parks and Reese Kofler Stanfield are joined by Angela Jackson, and she's going to explain what she calls riding a horse boring. Hmm. We're going to get to it right after we hear from our sponsor, Wintech Saddles. Looking for a saddle that's affordable, durable, and comfortable for you and your horse? It sounds like you're looking for a Wintech. Wintech Saddles combine world-leading innovations and high-tech materials in a lightweight, weatherproof, and easy-to-care-for saddle. The comprehensive Wintech range offers not only cutting-edge designs, but also reaches new standards in fit, comfort, and performance benefits for both you and your horse. It's easy to see why Wintech is the world's number one synthetic saddle brand. With styles for any discipline and confirmation, there's a Wintech saddle for you. Visit Wintech-saddles.com today to view Wintech's full range of saddles and reach a new level of comfort for you and your horse. We are so happy to have FEI rider and trainer Angela Jackson on the program. Welcome, Angela. Thanks for having me. We were going to talk about today, um, when do you ride a horse boring? Yeah, I, I sometimes um, underride a horse a little bit just because I feel anxiety in the horse. And especially in young horses, the mind cannot handle what the body sometimes produces. So uh, if I feel that that is just way too much, I have to trust. Uh, my feeling, and and I can only ride the horse to what the mind can handle at that time. Uh, And and if that means a little on the boring side, then that's what I have to do. When we were just talking, I said, yeah, I was just saying how much I agree with this so much. And I get a little bit irritated when people are riding young horses, like over tempo, just to show off their, you know, their leg movement, basically. And you can see that the, this just produces so much anxiety in the horses and, and problems. Maybe not, maybe not problems in the moment, but you're, you're going to have problems at some point in the horse's training because there, it, lacks, it lacks relaxation and it lacks trainability. Correct. And, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's just kind of, it's just kind of a, a pet peeve of mine, uh, you know, just because you can ride them super forward and super fancy doesn't mean that's good for them or that, or that you should. So, you know, in my program, when I'm starting three-year-olds, four-year-olds, I, I really like to just ride them boring and ride them, a little, you know, kind of relaxed and in, in, in the contact yeah. and, 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 and in some of my lessons too, I, you know, I have riders just make them quiet, make them jog like a quarter horse. And Correct. later on you can make them as fancy as you want, mm-hmm. but if they don't have good yeah. balance and, and you got to remember that, a horse is a flight animal, so by chasing them, you're inducing flight responses, Absolutely. and and it's just it's just problematic. I, I just see it too too much. And, yeah, and too you, much you're absolutely horse show. correct. Absolutely correct. I think the confidence in the young horse and the trust has to be developed, and the mental education is just as important as making them go for that big fancy trot. Now, I'm not saying that yeah, that there's certain young horses that can handle that and they're, they're easy with it and they have the mental capacity to, to handle it just fine. And if they do, then for all means, go for it, you know. Um, but I, I just remember that when I was working student for Klaus, that he always come in the arena and it's like, you cannot do, and even the upper level movement, he would educate them in, in, in half tempo or in half throttle and just repeat the motion in an easy, out, without power, and just work on what you were saying, the relaxation and the supplements. That's why it's in the bottom of the training scale. And just repeat, repeat the technique. And then once the horse is confident and trusting, you can put that power to it and make it super expressive. But then the trust is there. And I yeah. think that uh, it, it goes up in the training scale and it, it it goes up in the training, but it's all the same. The trust and the relaxation and the suppleness have to be there later on when you put the power in. And yeah, I and I a lot of people forget that. 
I love too that you said to do this with FEI horses. I completely agree because there's some times that you have to do it with FEI horses as well. And, and so all horses, you can't go around legs flying everywhere all the time. You have to Correct. really, really think about, take your time and, 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 and like you said, the repetition, and then there's times even in the horse show ring, maybe you just want a clean, quiet test. And so you don't go in full throttle right. versus going in and, and you may get legs of flying, but you may also get mistakes. And so you have to learn yeah. sort of with your, with your horse, what exactly you're trying to do with that particular horse and, and what is the goal? So there, so, you know, again, if you're going legs of flying, that's, you have to understand why you're doing that. And do you have all of the training scale or are they literally just tossing their legs? Wouldn't you say a lot of horses just toss yeah. their legs, but they're not through. Right. Correct. And, and again, I think, uh, the relaxation and the throughness then gets a little compromised and then it shows in certain ways. You see some horses with, with real tongue issues or, you know, other behavioral issues that, Yes, it, it looks like, yeah, you're riding and you're getting this bigger movement, but you also see the uh, the, the swooshing, t- t- uh, turning tail. Uh, these are these are usually signs of the the circle. The eight of the circle is uh, is just broken a little bit. You know, you you get. Uh, I think in Germany we call it Schenkelgängers versus um, um, back movers. You know, leg yes. movers, leg movers, back movers. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I think we get a little bit of that. Um, but I, I think with it, and it starts with the young horse. To get back to our our thing earlier, I think the young horses have to. Um, me coming from Germany, the auction riders they get these big fleshy trots. You know, they really you know throw in the power and they load them up on the hands. Um, and we always make a joke out of it. If you buy a horse at the auction, throw it out for three months and start over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's true. That's true. I mean, all, you guys have all heard that. And that's why, because they just right. create this, yeah. this false tension. And, uh, and then you just have to kick him out in the field and say, forget about it. And then start over again and, and work on the suppleness and the throughness and over the back and the, you know, just gymnasticizing the horse a little bit more. So that engagement, can be created in the correct way. Yeah. No, I think that that's in, a, in the correct way. So, in the correct way. Um, right. And so learning to, to be able to do that is incredibly important and really know what you're doing versus just flying around. Uh, cause like you said, the auction riders are trying to sell horses that trot big. They're no, not trying right. to that's ride them, right? Like turn them. Yeah. Well, they yeah. go only in an oval. I gotta remember yeah. they, they have a, <laughs> You know, they have a stiff horse that is right between the reins and the legs, and you go forward and legs are flying, and uh, there is no circle, and there is, you know, these kind of things. So, so uh, you have to keep that in mind. So, yeah. a lot of people then get a little disappointed when they go home and they look a little more normal. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, yeah, it has to be developed. And the horse has, again, to me, I think trust is a big thing. The horse has to trust yeah. and has to learn trust. Um, yeah. I get here and there some horse, and it's a shame because I had a couple of very nice young horses uh, that came in after the fact that they can do young horse classes because somebody tried and 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 maybe failed, and then they come come to me and uh, I just I just fix the horse. I never showed it showed it, but um, you know it, it it came to me. They had tried for two years to put a flying change on the horse, and uh, and it was completely fried. I mean, you couldn't even, if you just as much as cantered and tried to write a diagonal, all hell would break loose. I mean, it just completely had an anxiety meltdown. And um, so we just worked on simple, basic, you know, ABCs again, like what I would teach a four-year-old. And we just started right from scratch, uh, even though this is already an older horse. And I'm like, look, you got to, you just, you just have to just, just chill. And, you know, we are now, how long are we in it? four or five months into it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm now able to, to do a clean change left and right. Okay. Um, yeah. but you know, it, it, it's just one of those things where you just have to go and say, 
look, they already get the word because there's all X, Y, Z, they're starting to kick and they're starting to pull and they're starting to slow you over and off balance and this and that and, and more and more anxiety builds up. And before you know it, like I said, I was not able to ride even, even as much as I attempted a diagonal line, it was not possible. It was right. not possible. Right. So, yeah. so then you have to just make lots and lots of small little transitions and teach the ABC again. And that's it. Right. Right, right. And well, gotta be patient. You got to be patient, and so. But I love the idea of you know controlling that tempo and controlling you know not yeah. going for the throttle. I think that that's such a great tip, Angela. Thank you so much for coming on the show again tonight, and uh, we so appreciate you and all that you do and and all of your training. So thank you for coming. And that's a wrap. You can find all of the Horse Radio Network podcasts wherever you go by having the free Horse Radio Network app for your iPhone or your Android. Just go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. It's free, easy to use, easy to download. This is Coach Jen, and I will be back again soon with another tip. Until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements made by guests on the Horse Tip Daily. Please use your own judgment when listening to the tips on this show. <laughs>